Welcome in, everybody. Sydney and Tyler with you for another episode of Scars and Spikes. Tommy is going to be joining us a little bit late, having some internet issues. Um, but yeah, Tyler, how's it going? Good. Apparently, the internet issue that I had last week has now carried over to Tommy. <laughs> he is on the struggle bus as well. So it's not me this week, thankfully. I'll need better internet. Look, it's it, when it when it works, it's great. It, and it, we've been doing this for over a year now, and now it's just like well, I'm gonna decide to have issues, whatever. Right. Uh, Jack saying in the chat, Tommy is busy watching McGill Berry highlights, so you can neither uh, confirm or deny that. <laughs> Neither confirm. Although, although I don't know how many highlights he has just for just yet with the LA Galaxy. To be honest with you, he's getting not all his fault, but yeah, he's getting some time. But um, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have you along for the ride. Um, Tyler, who do we have coming up tonight for this episode? I should say we have none other than MLS 360 host herself, Kaylin Kyle. Obviously, former um, Olympic star, former uh, player of many, many NWSL teams, Canadian, Canadian national. international, exactly. Yeah. So, so, yeah, looking forward to having her fun. on. I know Tommy is looking forward to tonight's show as well because you have a rent coming up a little later. I hear. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you confirm that? Yeah. It sounds very unconvincing. I'm super Tommy. excited about it. <laughs> You'll know why once once I get to it. All right. You came well, in and you're. Uh, it's better now. I think it was just the last vestiges of your internet getting getting <laughs> fixed. But you came in looking like a piece of burnt toast. <laughs> it was right. Pretty rough. <laughs> Is that a southern reference? I don't get it. No, you just looked rough. You looked rough. I am rough. I got a cavity taken care of today. I just woke up from a nap like 15 minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> Letting the let the painkillers kick in. Yeah, I'm I'm all right. We'll uh, we'll monitor your progress throughout the episode. So if yeah. Tommy kind of peters out during the end of the show, you'll know why. <laughs> but um, guys, let's not waste any time. Let's talk about kind of wrap up the conversation about TFC because we're already halfway to the next match against Chicago FC or Chicago Fire FC at Mercedes Benz Stadium on Sunday, Easter Sunday, by the way. But yeah, let's kind of just bury that once and for all, shall we? Any is initial this thoughts? Where Tommy has a rant? Yes, yeah, this time for your rant, or are we waiting for that a little bit later? Oh, he's warming up. Let me okay. Let me right now. All I right. get to do this once a year, just once. I, I get one. I get to complain about this one time a year. Atlanta United pays for some of the best players that they can get in the world. The team spends a lot of money. They do it. MLS keeps scheduling games during international windows, and the teams that go get the best players suffer. And you guys spent your Saturday, and people listening... You stayed, you let your Saturday nights sit down and watch that trash game. And I'm not blaming Atlanta United players. because I, I'm not. Because any sport that you have where you replace five, six people in your starting lineup and have to put them in, whether it's football, basketball, whatever, you are not going to win a game. I'm sorry, you're not. Look what happened last year when almost, <laughs> it's not fully similar but look at the open cup game last year you played a much inferior team than toronto and you lost that game too it sucks and you know thinking about it like i, I thought about when i was watching this the other uh, i watched it yesterday so tuesday watching that game it was like jeez like I, I can't watch this like this is just unwatchable and then realizing like people that go out and spend money, like you, you, you spend f all your money to go travel and watch this when you have all these players, like people don't know what games, like some people don't look before they buy tickets to games and see like, oh, it's, it's international break. Atlanta's going to be missing all these players. It's going to be a bad game. They charge you the same amount of money to watch this, this product. Right. And it like, I did that once I went to a game in Cincinnati and everybody was gone. 
like everybody was gone and we remember. <laughs> i think it was no no not that one. Oh, yeah. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah that game there was a cincinnati one it, i think it was like a one one draw and like ronald hernandez scored that game in the 69th minute that's all my son ever talks about in that game that's the only thing he remembers from that game ronald <laughs> hernandez in the 69th minute however you, you still spend the money and like you're a growing league right? You're growing. You you went from streaming games on your website to ESPN to Apple. You're you're growing. You got messy in here. And we're still playing around with this. Like, it's an inferior product when you're playing. And it's not just us. Like, even if we won, I'd still be complaining about this. Or even if we got a draw. Like, you're trying to get the best product out there. And there's no other leagues out there that are doing this. And, you know, you're not, not you're scheduling games for Man City and Holland's not there. You know, like that, that's not happening. And it's just, it's frustrating because you're spending, you, you know that you're ready to watch these games and you know that it's just, it's not going to be good. And Tyler, bless your heart for saying that, that they were going to win this week. But I knew there was no chance here <laughs> just for the fact that there's so many players out and that you got to put it in. You got it. You got to play, right? You have to play the game. But that many mixed matched uh, of people coming in, it's, it's near impossible. So for most I, teams. I gotta say, before I'm, you do that, before you do that, I gotta say, I think you're rubbing off on us. I mean, I think we're rubbing off on them, Tyler. I think you're about to steal exactly said, bless what your I'm heart. <laughs> what? Yeah. Hey, That's he, my wife's favorite flag in the supporter now. section. Bless your heart. <laughs> That's her favorite flag. Every time she sees it, like we went to a game once and there was the bless your heart flag was not there. Like that's all she talked about the entire game was how that flag was there. Right, was um, and then when it's like a that different color, she gets excited. So, but yes, bless your heart. You you thought you said they were going to win. I didn't bet the game because I didn't watch it. But if I did, I would have. I I could have bet any amount of money because I knew there was no chance this team was winning. Mm. And and again, it's not the players, but like yeah, you want to see young players come in, right? You want to see Tyler Wolf come in and do well. Um, you want to see Firmino come in, but. They're, they don't have a real good chance to come in and do something when it's a mixed match team. Cobb comes in, right? Every game Cobb has started, it's been, here, go out there and, and play this game, but don't worry. I mean, no starters are playing practically every time. Like, that's all we say about him is that, oh, he gets a chance to play, but sorry, there, there's there's no reinforcements for you. You're, you're, you're going to have a, you're gonna have bad luck here. And it sucks because, like, in Europe, oh, you know, when Garnacho was there for... for uh manchester united like they didn't just throw him into like a mixed match team he he came in when all the starters were there right and so we actually had talent around him to make him better too no you're throwing all these guys in that don't have a lot of time normal starting time with guys that also don't have normal starting time and it's just it's a bad product overall and it's been like this especially since covid since 2021 when they had to mash all the international things to catch up for a year and a half. And now you add uh, League's Cup to this. So now the schedule is still compact, plus the international windows. It's a mess. I'm done. I'm sorry. I just need to say it. It's only one time. I'm, it's going to happen again. And I'm going to be angry. And I'm going to say we're going to lose. But I just needed to get it out. Thank you. We'll we'll replay this rent next year. <laughs> Twenty twenty five international break. Every opening international yeah. break. Get you yeah, just replay it. Down. Right. <laughs> just say hit the clip. Hit the clip. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I you know, I don't disagree with you at all. I just think I think Atlanta could have won this game. Toronto actually didn't play that great. They did enough to do the job and they're playing at home. They have you know, the Italians for, well, most of the game anyway. But, you know, y you looked dysfunctional, which is to be expected when you're missing that many starters. You don't get that chemistry just from going to the training ground. It's not going to happen. You have to have actual minutes together in a competitive environment. And I, I do think this team is better prepared than they ever have been in the past four or five years to go away and get results but you know you, you still got to grind them out you still have to make it happen and i just i still i still contend that this was very much a winnable game even after seeing it and sitting through the agony that was that match because it wasn't fun it wasn't pretty at all it was very ugly 
you yeah. didn't you just had no cohesiveness between your defense and and I'll also this may be a hot take but I actually think Atlanta's defense was the better third of the pitch. I know that goes against a 2-0 scoreline, but the midfield and the in the attack wasn't doing much of anything. No, you know? not at all. So like, I I just it, it, the whole thing wasn't pretty, but you you can you can still do better and you have to hope with this group, which is probably going to be the majority of the group whenever you have these international breaks and everything else, that they build up some chemistry, some cohesiveness, and they can at least put together a much more gelled product going forward, and they can steal some results on the road when you need them. And at home, because it's not just away matches when you're going to have this. So, <laughs> if Even only we with had- that, yeah. Those things just trying to there. <laughs> even with that, and we see some of your questions in the chat if you join us live. Even with that, I think maybe the scoreline flattered Atlanta just a little bit because this could have easily been, I'll say like 4 0 or something like that. Kazan made some key saves throughout the night. I don't think you can really fault him. Yeah, you know, I saw some people on social media faulting him for their first goal. I don't know if he can really fault him either goal. Um, I think maybe the defense was probably the best part of the night, but I'll say in some respects, maybe the best of the worst. Um, not to say it was terrible, but there are some mistakes in the back that led to those goals. Um, I think the first goal and not to, you know, not to put it on Cobb, unfortunately, because he's still a young player uh, who got really tossed in because of lack of personnel. Um, he kind of gets sucked in on that first goal. Maybe gets caught in the position defending where he shouldn't have been. I think that's more youth and, you know, maybe a little bit of lack of experience more than anything. So he'll learn from that. He'll bounce back from that, I'm sure. Um, and then, yeah, the second goal, maybe more of the same, a little uh, defensive misplacement and it's 2 0. Um, I thought they would come out, make a few more adjustments at the break and come out of the locker room and really push for that second really puts right equalizing goal. I bet I thought it was a good testament to them to keep it one nil at the break. Um obviously you're still trailing, but you keep it manageable. You keep the lead manageable. Of course they went down two nil and you know I wasn't really convinced that the attack would really do too much to get them back into the game, unfortunately. So that two nil could have just as easily been four nil. One thing I do fault Pineda for, and we asked him about it, in, um, or it was asked of him in the post-match press conference. Why did he start Tyler Wolf over Shonde Silva? Tommy, you have, you're <laughs> bursting out of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm interested in your thoughts. Are you going to get a rant part two here or what? <laughs> no, but that's what I said before we saw the lineups, right? I think my name when I joined the thing was where is Silva? <laughs> yeah. Where is where you, you've got so much not busy going for you. Okay, Tommy. Right. He was busy. He had a job to do. Have he you ever seen Spider Man and Shande Silva in the same room at the same time? <laughs> I didn't see Spider Man either on the out there. Well, I didn't see yeah. anyone. <laughs> All these guys are missing. Everybody. You want a chance to win? Start start your starters, the ones that you have available. Don't short yourself even more unless there's an injury, which I, th- I don't think they said there was. It was it was an option. It was just coach's you know choice to to put him in. Why, why you're already so short handed? I, I like Tyler Wolf. I think he's a fantastic sub. Mascara, same thing. But you're short everybody in the world. Why not start an, at least one of your other guys that has played almost all your minutes? that could at least create chances for you. Here's one thing I want to call Pineda out on, and not in a mad way, not in the ranty way, but he said that Wolf had a great, you know, great training. I mean, training is one thing. Training is okay. It's okay if you have great training, but that doesn't translate to on-the-pitch performance. And I'm not saying Tyler Wolf is not a bad player. Um, I think... Pineda, to his credit, said that maybe the tactics based on how Bernadeschi was going to be lined up by John Herdman kind of went into why Wolf started. And I can understand that, but, you know, I think at the same time, like you say, Tommy, still start your best players, the players that you do have. So I think that Pineda got the selection wrong. 
as far as starting Wolf over Silva. Again, not anything against Tyler Wolf, but I'll know if this is the match that suited him. So that was the one thing that I think we all agreed. You know, it's kind of really puzzling going into this match. Yeah. So I'll play I'll play devil's advocate because I, I agree with you. I do think unless there was an extenuating circumstance, I just think you have to throw in Silva because he is you knew your attack in this match was going to come from the wings. You knew that's what it was going to be. It, you know, we'll never know exactly what his thought process was, but y- you've got to start Silva to play devil's advocate. I do understand you've got this kind of new and improved defense. You're going away. You know, you're up against the ropes just by MLS being a difficult you know, league to play in. You got Silva and you're thinking, man, if, if that guy can come off the bench against tired legs, you can make something happen. That's my only thought process. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I can think of. And I don't know if that's true. I do think it's funny because, you know, there's so many wildly varying opinions about this match. And I'm just going to drop this in the chat real quick. If you don't know this, by the way, on scarvesandspikes.com, obviously match day, we have a ton of content just about every day. We have content coming out. Um, but we actually have a document that you can fill out on, on the website easy just at the end to say, you know, to rate the players to, for your own ratings. You know, we do the the player rating videos, uh, most weeks on here, but you can also kind of jump in and and get your, your, your thoughts in. And that actually comes out in an article. So I'm dropping the article in the chat. And I just think it's funny because you have so many wild varying opinions on kind of what people rated whoever, um, just out of curiosity though, fought mob, not that we, you know, think that that's the, the Bible for ratings. Who do you think had the highest rating? Kazan. Nope. Either him or Lennon. Nope. Oh, wait. Okay. Lennon. Yes. Who do you think had Both the second Lennon. highest? <laughs> Kazan. Nope. Saba. Nope. Nope. Saba was actually, Saba was tied for the lowest. Really? Uh-huh. Even with the half chance he had. Yep. Mm. He was tied Medium. with the RA for the lowest. Huh. Muyamba was the next. I was just going to say Muyamba. Interesting. Interesting. Brad had a 6.7. Yeah. I think, again, Brad kept a minute, really. Yeah. And again, like I said, the score like maybe flatters Atlanta for that reason. So. But I get more yeah. mad, though. Like, what, what, hear what you're saying, Tyler? Like, I'm more upset because you said it was a winnable game, right? We should Wolf have three points. Point two, by the way, I'll just throw that out there. Go ahead. We should have three points. We should be celebrating. We should be we should be having a, a Wednesday, but now we're having a weeping Wednesday. That's what we're having. <laughs> we're on a weeping Wednesday because this because we 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 did this. Again, like I, I know it, this is MLS and this is what we have, but I'm still gonna yell about it one time a year. And people can yell at me mm-hmm. or agree or be <laughs> or agree with me. And then like, but like you hear other things like Sydney, you said, you know, you 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 think Yakamakis you know could win uh the golden boot but you know but then you add it right after that but he's gonna be missing a bunch of games and that's gonna hurt him right and then you hear garth lagerway talk about i know yeah then you hear garth lagerway talk about oh we've got leagues cup but we're gonna be missing some of our best players uh in that it's like you've got all these things and you're just gonna get hurt because you've got some of your best players going and yeah. it sucks why do we have to yeah. sign good players i know why can't we we should, can say, we just we like should sign them, bad like, players the, you know like your interview processes you know, garth lagerway you know he talks about everything you need, you need to play in two leagues and uh have success in these you know success in leagues well how do you rank in your country do you think they'd call you up <laughs> right <laughs> Can, do you think you convince them not to call you up maybe for yeah. one of the games yeah well i'm done I'm done with that okay. game. We could we could stop talking about that game if you guys are cool with it. Okay. No. Yeah, we can. We can. When's the next um, game where all our players are gone? <laughs> I don't there's know. A, well, there's an article on scarvesandspikes.com. There, there is yeah. an article. There is. Great did a great job breaking down like availabilities, feature availabilities, or pending av- unavailabilities. Um, but real quick before we move on, USL, maybe make it move into north, well, not north shoulder, but northern part of Atlanta Metro. 
potentially a USL championship team returning to Atlanta, where LA United 2 was once the USL championship before dropping, of course, the MLS Next Pro. And also, guys, this is interesting, a USL Super League team potentially coming to the city of Roswell. Um, a lot of talk about maybe NWSL coming to Atlanta through the Atlanta United Ownership Group, uh, AMB, Arthur Blake and his crew. But maybe Super League beats him to the punch for a top flight women's team. I think it's very interesting. I think that um, maybe the market can support both. It's big enough to support both. Um, well, I should say support USL Championship at the very least. The USL Super League will be kind of like the excuse me, the only top flight women's team in Metro Atlanta. Um, if this moves forward and we have more details on scarfsandspikes.com, if this moves forward, I think whoever owns these teams, I think they'd be doing themselves a massive disservice if they don't name the women's team the Atlanta Beat. A massive disservice. Um, if they can. If they can, exactly. And I don't know if the copyright is still held by the original ownership group or a holding company of some sort, but at least make a try for it and push for those rights if you can't get it readily. But yeah, that's, that could be up in the air. That could be coming. Um, City of Roswell and the USL have exclusive negotiating rights until the December 31st. They can expand or extend that if they don't come to an agreement by then. But yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, Atlanta continues to be a soccer community. And you know, if they're targeting 2026, that's when the World Cup is here and all of that. So yeah, I think Atlanta United and the USL Championship team, independent USL Championship team, can coexist. I mean, this yeah. will be different than Atlanta United too, but. I think the two can coexist. I think certainly a women's team, a top-flight women's team, can exist here um, in Metro Atlanta. Yeah, I, I you know I got to give a shout out real quick to soccer down here. Our, our guys, John Nelson, Jason Longshore, um, all of them. Cruz. They had yeah, Madison Cruz, uh, Jared, Jared Smith. Smith. All, <laughs> all, I just named them all. Yeah. But no, they they had um, a lot, some more information this morning, and forgive me because I cannot remember his name, but. Uh, from the economic and like development side of Roswell this morning, they had some more details. So 10,000 seat soccer specific stadium, primarily focused on the women's yeah. uh, side though, yeah. which is really cool. And, and I want to, you know, I want to ask Kaylin about this when she gets on in a little bit, just to kind of get her thoughts on it, having played for so long, but 10,000 seat soccer specific stadium, expandable to 15,000, which is awesome. And, you know, they're, they're still trying to decide exactly where it's going to be. Like I see some some stuff in the uh, the chat, Dan, saying I suspect it'll be a failure if they don't get a site close to MARTA. I think the nearest MARTA station is like four miles from Roswell. But North one of the things Springs, we talked yeah. about this morning was, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be working on the infrastructure because they understand that that's traffic. I mean, the whole city's traffic haven. Right. But for an evening match, that's a tough go that's a tough oh, yeah. go for anybody outside of roswell so no but it, it's an exciting time and yeah i think 100 percent. like it, I, I put it out on twitter this morning on scarves and spikes but like bring all the soccer you already got u.s headquarters coming here um soon breaking ground on it you've got now the potential for a top flight you know it's new but a top flight women's mm -hmm. team coming in a usl championship team coming in like there's lots to be excited about and just I hope all of it gets the same support that yeah. Atlanta United has gotten. There can't be like schisms between Atlanta United and USL Championship. You know, they, they have to work hand in hand. I know they'll do the different ownership groups, but it's for the greater good of the game. It's for the growth of the game. So yeah, I'm all, I'm all for it. I, I hope it passes. I hope they come to the agreement to make this happen. And more to come, I'm sure. But yeah, that's the initial report. Nothing official yet, but again, Roswell and the USL are negotiating site. I don't know um, what the the equivalent of Roswell would be for Cincinnati, Tommy. It's like what's a northern suburb in Cleveland? Like twenty minutes north of Cleveland. What's you mean Cincinnati or Columbus? Because twenty minutes north. Well, yeah, of say Cleveland like an hour. Yeah, I would go in the lake. Yeah, 
<laughs> and I can't I can't swim, so I can't go right. visit that area. I'll be dead. <laughs> but yeah, so much. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, you know, it, real quick, it's interesting because in Cleveland they've been doing a huge push for NWSL. Like they're getting um, um, MLS Next Pro team here. I think in the next couple of years. Um, but the the city has been heavily promoting the NWSL here a lot. Like they're um, like there's a Twitter handle and they've been doing live like live streams uh, of games and, and talking about it. And they've been doing watch parties in the area. So it's really cool here to kind of see how they're they're trying to push it. Like they're already they're negotiating, you know, building a stadium and all of that. No, I can't swim, Bo. I'm sorry. I could I could I could walk on frozen water. I could skate, oh. <laughs> but I can't do that. I was about to say like you were Jesus or something. Like no, that. no, no. I, I could, I could slide across it. But yeah, I mean, it's it's fun watching like here where soccer isn't you know huge, but like you're seeing people get really excited for the NWSL. Like they're doing commercials and everything like that in the area. I'm really trying to to, to build that here. Yeah. So I hope you guys. One other thing I want to add real quick too that was mentioned on soccer down here this morning was that USL actually went to Roswell. They actually approached Roswell about this. It wasn't like, I mean, Roswell is, is going through, you know, trying to build a infrastructure for this kind of thing. But it was USL that actually went to them and said, hey, we would like to make this happen. The women's team and a USL championship team in a suburb of Atlanta. And y'all look like the right one. And, and I agree. I mean, I think you could pick anywhere really around Metro Atlanta. But I mean... Roswell is is growing. It's in a, a good area. I mean, you handle the infrastructure issue, and, and I think you've got something special up there. Yeah, agreed. And uh, by the way, Justin Papadakis, uh, the deputy CEO of USO in charge of real estate as well, is from Roswell. So another kind of yeah. twist to that. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll let you all know. Um, real quick, uh, patreon.com slash scarves and spikes. Help support local soccer coverage here and the ATL. We appreciate you all already who have supported us as patrons. Thank you so much for doing that. We really appreciate your um, generosity and you know, it helps us do a lot of great things, helps us um, do watch parties, live streams, live podcast events elsewhere. Um, so, yes, patreon.com slash scarves and spikes. Um, Scarfsandspikes.com. Follow us on Instagram, Scarves and Spikes, X, Threads, the whole nine yards. I was trying to see. I'm sorry. I, I, I had to. I was trying to figure out what kind of glass Tommy's drinking out of over here. Yeah. What kind of glass are you drinking out of, Tommy? Pick the picture for okay. Ghostbusters. It's a, yeah. That's like my I favorite movie franchise. That. And I saw it this weekend. <laughs> it was It was amazing. Last real quick thought before very special guest comes on yes april 6th she believes cup we are going to be at the bins and at the signia hotel like we were for the home opener for atlanta united we will be at the nest on four bar up on the fourth floor easy to find it's right next to the bins you come out and um we're going to do a live show just after she believes cup ends and yep. then before atlanta united plays at 7 30 so come out hang out with us talk about the game or games and get ready for Atlanta United. Yeah, really excited for that. And more details to come on scarfspec.com and on our social media channels. Well, we have a special guest. And before I say this, so we have had Kevin Negan, we've had Bradley Wright Phillips, we've had Sasha Clushton. So three of the four MLS 360 hosts make it four of the four. And MLS fashionably late. Host. Why? It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not late at all, actually. It's all right. <laughs> um, gotta catch them all. <laughs> What's going Hi, on? Everyone. Kaylin Kyle, how are you? I'm good. Okay, I'm just going to put a disclaimer on this. This isn't normal, but this is me multitasking. And the fact of the matter is, I was filling in, filling in for Jillian Sakovitz today for This Is MLS because she was out with the stomach flu. Okay. It ran a little bit late, Aww. so I'm doing everyone a favor here, but I'm actually doing uh, a secret interview tomorrow in Kansas, so I needed my hair done, and it's the only time, so I am so sorry. <laughs> hey, guys, I brought my lights and everything. So oh, nice. I made there you this go. studio just for you. I don't miss things. Well, so, we appreciate it. <laughs> you now win the award for the 
best like background studio, whatever you want to call it, that we've ever had on the show. I'm so sorry. No, it's great. It's it's amazing. And what's your stylist name? Uh, this is she's actually new. She's just doing my extensions right now, so she's amazing. I'm so, I've like put her on the spot. I'm so sorry. Um, but this is just you know what happens when you multitask with two small boys is the only time. Yeah. So Harrison's holding down the fort back home uh-huh. with the kids. Like when you coming home, I've got some food. I'm like I need my hair done because <laughs> there's a, a really cool interview going to be dropping in a few weeks time that we're we're shooting tomorrow with Major League Soccer. So it'll be really really cool. By the way, Harrison Heath, your husband. Briefly with Atlanta United, of course, we should mention that. So, hope he is doing well. I need to put a disclaimer on, too. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. One of my favorite MLS teams that he's played for, but also where we've lived. We were, like, right in Roswell. I love the band. I love the group. Um, Arthur Blanc was amazing to us. It was was honestly a really, really special time uh, for us in Atlanta. So, we love the ATL and all you guys. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, definitely give Harrison their regards as well. Um, so yeah, let, let's start it off with MLS from a wider lens. Um, you work, you know, for MLS 360, of course, so you get to watch all the matches with Kevin, Brad, and Sasha. Um, overall thoughts on what's going on in the league thus far. What are your overall thoughts? Um, I think for me, I think the East, you look at the East and it is one of the, I'll say the most competitive I've seen it in a really long time. Like I genuinely don't know who is going to make the playoffs in the best possible way. And I think we haven't seen that in the East in a really long time. I mean, you look top of the table to bottom of the table and I think it truly could be anyone making the playoffs this year. With the West, it's more of like the West. I don't really know what's going on in the West. Like you have Seattle at the bottom, Minnesota at the top. Like it's wild. It's like the wild, wild West over there. So, um, it's been amazing. There's been incredible goals. There's also one thing that I've like the biggest takeaway is the amount of big time signings. So, you know, when everyone's like, it's a retirement league. I mean, we have, you guys have Diego Almada, World Cup winner, the first active MLS Cup player that has played in the World Cup and is staying in Atlanta. Um, Jakob Makis that probably could play for any team in Europe right now. The guy is amazing and he's making Atlanta his home. He's taking over the Joseph Martinez era. So, I just think what Major League Soccer has created, especially partnering with Apple TV, and just now we're in over 100 countries. I mean, before my mom in Canada couldn't watch us. She was like, how can I illegally stream you? So I think it's really, really cool what Major League Soccer and Apple TV has done. And I know I work for them, so I know they pay my check at the end of the day. But honestly, what they've done, what they've created, the studio, the talent, and just the work that goes in behind the scenes, I'm honestly so grateful to be part of it. I know anytime, you know, I'm not, you know, focused on Lady United match. Maybe they play on Sunday like they are this weekend. You know, I'll turn on 360 and watch you all. And it's a great resource where the league hasn't had it before. Just that um, whip around coverage that the league hasn't had in the past, kind of like the NFL does. So I know I love watching it. And I really, for one, I'm sure Tyler and Tommy agree Really appreciate the work you all do on a week to week basis. Yeah, and I, I gotta, I gotta give a shout out real quick. My wife, you're her favorite. You are her favorite. And it, <laughs> I knew I liked you. I knew I liked you the best. It's, it's for my outfits, isn't it? Or I'm trying to keep the guys on their toes. <laughs> it's, it's that, and you know, you know what did it last year was how much you would poke at Sasha about all kinds of stuff, but especially the mustache, especially you know the mustache. So- you know what's so funny about that? There was at one point they were like, do you guys even like each other? And me and Sasha are like super close now. So we were dying laughing. We we're like, yeah, we like genuinely really like each other. But we're like, it's just so, it's, he's like my older brother. Yeah. Like he's just like my older brother where we just get on really well. It's a really special relationship. And Bradley's the same. And then we were so lucky. I mean, you guys know Kev Egan. He's, yeah. he has been the game changer for 360. Mm. His, you know, his attitude, his, you know, just passion for football, soccer, whatever you want to call it. And then his knowledge about the league is second to none. So it's been really, really cool. He keeps us on our toes. You know, he shuts me and the guys up weekly and um, in the best possible way. So we, we really created a really, really cool group. As I'm getting my hair straightened. <laughs> Trust so me, it's going question- worth the interview tomorrow. <laughs> So with that, with that, with what you just said about you know the East being so competitive, um, when you did the season predictions, you had Atlanta United as seventh, oh, I know. one I spot did. lower than what they finished last year. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you because everyone else asked when 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 those posted is bring it on why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why? 
I think my, my Do you think we got thing, worse? No, I just think when I look at Atlanta United, you lo- you lose Miles Robinson. And I think in Major League Soccer, successful teams, you have a really good spine of your team. You have Brad Guzan, who's not aging backwards. He's aging forwards. So, you know, I didn't know, is he going to be your starting goalkeeper? Are they going to go with their second string goalkeeper? Are they going to bring someone new in? You lose Miles Robinson to Cincinnati, a mainstay player that it's not only what he does on the ball, but it's his vocal communication. It's his leadership as well. And it's someone that you can trust in transition. And I think that's for me, when I look at Atlanta United, your biggest weakest point is in transition because you have so many attacking players some of the best in major league soccer we all know major league soccer you win or lose games in transition especially with the players that they're bringing in so it makes me a little bit nervous and also you're a very different team without tiago in the midfield without yaka marcus and that's blatantly obvious obviously when they are gone or international break or one of those two players are injured so my only really big nervous point with your team is if one of those two guys go down injured like we saw Yaka Marcus last season I, I don't know if you are that number it's not going to happen I'm going to knock on knock wood, on wood, knock on wood. it's not going to happen we need him for the league because he's such yeah. an amazing player um, that's why I, I put you in seventh I'd probably move you up a little bit higher now I think maybe I had a glass of wine when I was doing it so maybe I'd do like four, fifth or fourth or fifth <laughs> we're moving up <laughs> well, yeah, we're moving up in the world. It's a fair point, though. We we just got done ranting about the international breaks. So I heard you guys. I was listening to you, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We yeah, it, we yeah. we beat the dead horse. It is what it is. Yeah. Right. Um, Think three times if you agree with me. <laughs> so this is totally off topic from Atlanta United and MLS, but I think you might have heard some of it before, but and you said you were in Roswell. So Roswell getting should be getting a women's team in the USL Super League, the new team, and also a USL championship team. What are your thoughts overall? Because you spent time here. Love what do it. you think about Love Atlanta it. having a women's team? Love it. The more teams, the better. I just think Atlanta is such an incredible city. Now you have the hub of U.S. soccer. You have an owner that truly believes in the growth of the game, not only for the men's, game but the women's game like genuinely passionate about it and even when we live there like the the love that people have for soccer there is truly remarkable you have a venue for 2026 like it just makes sense and it makes sense like yeah there are different leagues but it grows the game in general it pushes other leagues to be better it pushes you know I mean Atlanta is one of the the best major league soccer teams in in terms of infrastructure I mean one of the coolest stadiums in the league the training ground's absolutely phenomenal I I'd obviously gone there and checked it out when Harrison played there but I just think it's second to none so if you can continue to keep expanding that and growing that and giving more players an opportunity to one day maybe play in the MLS if they get seen in the USL or a women's team you know not only into inspire you know players to play professional but semi-professional or even on the women's team to be you know give them that hope of one day I could be the next Alex Morgan I can be the next Carly Lloyd or Christine Sinclair I just think it's awesome and I think it just grows the game in the best way possible really quick are you doing anything for she believes cup I'm not I am solely MLS baby um I do you know obviously women's soccer I hold near and dear to my heart and I still watch it I watch the NWSL I watch you know former players that I played with that are commentating now for it like Leanne Sanderson from England and um, yeah, I, I I love seeing the game grow. I just saw that Sophia Smith is now one of the highest paid and yeah. soccer players for the Portland Thorns. Yep. Karina LeBlanc, my former goalkeeper, is the GM there. So I'm just like, yes, I'm liking, I'm retweeting, I'm sharing. I'm like, whatever <laughs> you can to continue to keep growing this women's game. Like, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'll ask you this, though. Um, of course, the Super League is Division One as well, like the NWSL. So yeah, if those two leads kind of going after uh, different markets, what will that mean for the women's game, especially with 2026 coming up in the World Cup and 2027 as well with possibly the Women's World Cup being co-hosted by the U.S. and Canada? Yeah, I think it only, like I said, it only grows the game to be better. I think it pushes leagues to be better. I think it pushes leagues to, you know, get better infrastructure if they don't have it. Um, I was really lucky that I played with some phenomenal teams in the NWSL, so I was a little bit spoiled in that aspect. You know, I played for Portland. I played for Orlando. um, I played for Seattle, and I played for owners that genuinely cared about, you know, the women's game and giving them proper stadiums and training grounds. So I think, you know, all teams is a good thing. And I think it pushes, you know, more players to become pros and give them that platform and whatever league they choose to play in. And I think it's a positive all around. 
Yeah. So yeah, I look forward to seeing what that looks like, especially for the Super League. You know, it'd be the new league on the blog. So looking forward to seeing what its growth entails here the next few years. Um, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but MLS 360, this is your second year. Uh, Chris, Liam was hosting last year. Now Kevin is hosting as Liam kind of shifts to main studio work and then his NHL duties. Um, what's that been like for you over this past year plus of doing MLS 360? Like I said, you already hit on it before, but what's it been like for you as a former player and yeah, I, as a fan of MLS, I'm sure. Well, I've been a fan of MLS since I started playing. I mean, I played for the Vancouver Whitecaps organization, so I've always loved Major League Soccer. So I remember when I was interviewing for the job, they were like, why MLS? And I'm like, because I see where the league's going. Like, Don Garber's done such a good job in growing the league and, you know, implementing structures where it's soccer-specific stadiums. Um, so I, I just think it's only going to get bigger and better. And then when I heard Apple was coming on board, I'm like, it's a no brainer. It's like one of the biggest organizations in the world. And I'm like, absolutely. Like this has me, my name all over it. And then I also love being a female analyst. I can host, I can sideline report. I can do sit down interviews where, you know, and I was a former player. So I get both sides of it. And then I work with really cool people, you know, the Matt Doyles, the Andrew Weebies that might not have played, but are so knowledgeable about the league that they keep you honest. Like I'll message them for like, what do you think of this? Just to see, okay, am I missing something because I am a player? If, yeah. if that makes sense. Whereas before, I'd get into heated battles with people on Twitter being like, well, you've never played the game before. Like, in, like I want to slap me when I look back at the <laughs> Like, slap me across the face. So, um, yeah, I just think Apple's done such a good job in Major League Soccer with the talent that they brought in as well. It's, it's I'm really lucky to be part of it. Yeah. Sunday, there's only one game. It's Atlanta United against Chicago. Mm-hmm. What, how do you think this game is going to go? If you guys don't win this with your players back, you're doing something wrong. You're getting beaten transition. Reach it. <laughs> no, Reach it. I just think, I mean, you look at Atlanta United and you look at Chicago, and I've always been a big, I love Chicago because I want to see them do well. I love what the organization's done. I love, you know, they've changed the stadium. They've put in a great training ground. They're spending mo- money. Um, Hugo Pipers has started to find his form a bit in Chicago. I think he needs more service players around him, but paper to paper, you guys have the better team. You should win this game. And then your next game, I think it's away, New York City FC. You should win that game considering their form already in the season. But as we know with Major League Soccer, anything freaking goes. So, I mean, you can get your hair done while doing a podcast. It's great. I know. This is amazing. <laughs> um, and there's no wind in the bend. So there's right. going to be no craziness that's going to happen. Where Don't even bring that up. Don't even bring that up. <laughs> That was wild. That was yeah, wild. It was. Um, but it was funny because we actually had, we had Callum on uh, mm. last week, and I, we had to ask him about it. He was like, "That's one of the craziest goals I've ever seen in MLS." Yeah. It, it was wild. So I know. And then we had Weeby going on with the weather report. I'm like, Weeby, come on now. <laughs> well, like, you yeah. know, weather balloons and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's been and it and it's early, but what's been your biggest surprise in MLS so far this season, just in general? Oh, I think the West. There's like a lot of surprises there. Um, Philly, maybe the start to their season, but again, their big their big thing is if Julian Carranza is healthy. It's everything in Major League Soccer. If your big stars are not healthy, you tend to struggle in the league. So, I feel like those would be maybe my biggest my biggest surprises. Seattle, bottom of the table in the West. No one saw that coming. I mean, we did a, our this is MLS today. We shot the show and. I think all of us analysts had them in first or second right now or supporter shield contenders. So, but again, it's injuries. Three of your DPs are injured. You're going to tend to struggle. So um, I'm just looking at standings right now. As I sit here, Inter Miami, not a shock, is it? Uh, New York Red Bulls, maybe a pleasant surprise for most because you have Lewis Morgan. That's been phenomenal. I, I knew this about him when Inter Miami, his big thing, can you stay healthy? Dante Van Zier, best game I've seen him play. As the DP for New York Rebels, I was waiting for him to show up. And then you add Emil, um, Forsberg in the midfield. So I, I just think, you know, those maybe have been the biggest part. Toronto, actually. I have to put my hand up for that. I think I had Toronto maybe yeah. bottom of the table. But I know John Herdman, so I should have known better. Um, so, yeah, it's early, though. It's MLS. It's early. Yeah. Yeah. This We could be having a different conversation six months from now. <laughs> exactly. So don't it, like don't re-record like don't throw this back out on social media. Right. We won't pull out the receipts, we promise. <laughs> Atlanta fans already hate me, so I need to get them back loving me. 
Hey, yeah. well, you're in the right place. We'll be big headed. Exactly. You're in the right place. Exactly. Real, real quick. I mean, what do you make of the job that John has done in Toronto? I mean, you've played, you played for him for several years at the national level. What do you make of what he's done in Toronto, considering where they were over the past couple of years? I'm not shocked. And I should have known this better. Like, I'm not shocked because he did it with our Canadian women's team. He had six months before the Olympics to patch up the cracks and we won bronze. We should have never been on that podium. Then he went to our Canadian men's team and we we're all like, that's never been done by a national team coach going from a women's team to a men's team. And he had them finishing top of CONCACAF qualifying for the first World Cup in 35 years. Like, they had a hard group, don't get me wrong, great first game of the tournament, struggled, but he is so intelligent, he puts so much work in, he's so hardworking, he's so driven, and I'm just, he always gets the best out of his players, so I, I shouldn't have been shocked, and I had to text him the other day and apologize, it's like, John, he goes, no, don't worry, I got it laminated, it's hanging in my, right. my office at the training ground, I'm like, oh, he's like, you of all people, I'm like, no, I know, I know. Yeah, you can see, too, uh, the Italians, uh Insignia Bernadeschi, they seem a little more re-energized than they were in past years under Bob Bradley. Um, I don't know if it was a system thing. That was the difference between when Bob was there and now with John there. But you know, they seem re-energized, and you know, especially on Saturday when they beat Atlanta, you can see just evidence of that as well. Yeah, he's just inspiring. He inspires people on and off the pitch. He's driven. He works hard, so it makes you want to work hard. You don't want to let him down. So like, I still text him all the time even about like life things like i know it yeah. sounds really weird but he's just such a good human being he's like my second dad oh yeah that sounds awesome. weird but he is no, no. he truthfully <laughs> is so no that's awesome that's awesome yeah um i know you got to run here in a yeah. second but uh real quick i mean you're in new york city um favorite place to eat favorite spot to be in the city I'm a Jersey girl, all right. I'm not. I don't mess around with New York. Um, there's a lot of good Italians, so you can't and you can't go wrong with the bagel either in New York or New Jersey. But oh, yeah. I yeah. Really have like a favorite restaurant yet? I've only been here a year, so you got to give me time. Okay. We'll <laughs> ask you. Um, we'll ask you the next time you come back on. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> all right. Okay, Lynn. I know you got to run, but really yeah. appreciate your time. No, um, thank good you luck guys for, for having me. Yeah, good luck for everything on MLS 360, and hopefully we'll have you back soon. Sounds good. See you guys. Let her know she did a good job. She did yeah, a good job. Good it looks all right, right? <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Take care. She's great. Really great interview. I don't know. I tried to get my wife to come down and like work on my hair while we were doing this. <laughs> I just I got the middle finger emoji from her, so that's not gonna happen. It's funny. Uh, like, my wife normally she'll be watching these live, but the way that our middle son's soccer practice has been, it's during our show on Wednesdays now. Mm. So, but she's she's gonna. She's going to die laughing because that's what she likes about Caitlin. Personality is great. You know, it's, it, she's fun. Yeah. And so you show up and literally in the chair because she sent the message before I got to, I got to throw that out there. She sent the message before like, Oh, you know, I was late because I'm doing a hair appointment. Uh -huh. And then I didn't realize like actively still going on. I think that's freaking hilarious. And it's, it's <laughs> awesome. Well, we really appreciate your having her on. And like I said, that's now four for four for the Eblis 360 crew. Yeah. <laughs> finally, finally completed the set. Finally completed the set. Yeah. We complete our Pokédex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go, I mean, before we go, before we move on. Hey, we got a lot to we, go yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, before we move on, um, Tommy, you did an interview with a friend of yours about Stan Gregerson. Um, so maybe talk about that just a little bit. Sure. Yeah. You know, whenever uh, an LA United player gets injured, I usually send him the article that says, you know, here, here's what happened. Is it realistic? You know, I think we, we saw three to four weeks uh, after the surgery. They said that, you know, he would be back. And those questions I have like, okay, three to four weeks. But what is in, what happens in three to four weeks? Is it that he's able to start, you know, going back to training? Is he fully back up and going? And, and those are the questions that I, I like to ask. And I thought it'd be good to, to to have him on. And he was so nervous last night. He was changing his camera angle like four different times. Uh, he's like, I don't know. He was down in his bar down there. But, <laughs> you know, he he said that, you know, it's going to take a little bit, right? Like he might be able to come back and, and play in four weeks, but it's probably a substitution type thing where he's going to yeah. come in late, get a little bit of time here and there. And then, you know, fully up and going. I mean, they said it could take, you know, 10 to 12 weeks to fully be up and moving like, you know, hundred percent back there. But you know, that was, and that was the other thing. It was like, okay, well, when I hear meniscus, 
I'm usually thinking real bad things, right? Yeah. Up for a long time. And, you know, as long as he doesn't keep having these type of issues, because one, one of the things he brought up was Todd Gurley. If you know in the NFL, like he was one of the yeah. best running backs coming in. You all should know a lot about Todd Gurley if you're, you know, a Georgia person, right? Yep. And he kept getting his, you know, meniscus shaved, you know, over and over. And finally, it was just like, right. he, didn't have any, he didn't have anything left to run on. And, you know, that's why you're just hoping that, you know, this is it and that he doesn't re-injure it. And uh, we're going to have him back here um, about turf because we've had some conversations over the years about turf. And he's going to do his, uh, a little bit more studying on, especially newer versions of it. And that, that'll be a good interview to, to talk about because anytime you hear any injury about Atlanta United, the first thing you, he- you see on, on Twitter or in a Facebook comment is turf. Well, I bet you're going to say we'll have him back on the next Atlanta United injury. It's like, no, no, we don't need that. No, I'm not Tyler, where I'm going to go, oh, well, you know, we'll have him on. But knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. Knock on wood. Knock God on forbid Yaka Marcus or Steve Gregerson get hurt. <laughs> no. On wood. Yeah. But no, it's a, it's a larger knock discussion. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a larger discussion. Um, and by the way, go to Scars, Scars and Spikes YouTube channel. Uh, to see the conversation with between Tommy and Will is in the chat links if you're watching live. Too. Yeah, links in the chat if you're watching live. Uh, but yeah, it's a good conversation, good interview, and um, yeah, hopefully have him back yet to talk about turf because that's that's an issue. Uh, Mitch Purse from the national team tore ACL, so that's raised some more discussion about turf and soccer. So yeah, definitely check out the interview with between Tommy and Will. I mean, it's informative. I learned a lot. I know. Tyler, you did as well. Yeah. So, no, it was really good. Really good chat. Super really good chat. Yes, indeed. Ooh, real quick. Yes, uh, I played. I played a game in Miami while I was down there last week. Count the inner Miami jerseys that you see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, do you think it was below? I, I counted. I put a little marker in there. Lower or higher than twenty-five? Higher, higher. much higher. Lower. Lower. Lower than 15 or higher. Wow. Higher than 15. Lower. Lower than 15? I well, saw you eight. Get, you should have gone to Fort Lauderdale, though. Nah, but that shouldn't matter. Or, or in the, in, You should have gone to, like... Were you in South Beach at all? Or? I was, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you should have gone to like, South Beach. I went to South Beach, man. Uh, <laughs> it was spring break. Uh, there was oh, yeah. police everywhere. Um, but I will tell you that I ate. I ate like a champion. Like there was so much good food and like uh, surprisingly a lot of Italian. Um, I hung out with the battered herons. They were they were a fun time. Mm. But I will I uh, I will tell you that every bar that you go into, like you like walk into this bar and you're like okay, I'm just gonna grab a drink. And there's some girl dancing on a uh, on a table. It's like every like every, just like oh here's a bar, not loud music, and then there's just yeah. girls dancing on stage. It's like this is not Cleveland. This is not Atlanta. Like this is just Miami. It's Miami. a completely different world. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe it. It is. South so, Beach, baby. I'm just going to, I got to throw this out there because you're talking about, you know, you go to a different city and you start looking at the, the numbers of jerseys. We go to Orlando a lot. We have family down there. And every time I go, we always go to Disney or Disney Springs. And I always try to keep an eye out for jerseys. You know, the last three times I've been there. I have not seen a single person wearing an Orlando jersey, and I've seen a grand total oh. of this past three times, a grand total of six people wearing Atlanta United jerseys <laughs> in well, Orlando. That's because it's a tourist town, Tyler. That's why. No, it's because Atlanta's a big club. Well, that too, but <laughs> that too. I saw one Charlotte, one Charlotte uh huh. wow. Get out there, just one in our hotel. Definitely definitely a vacation. Definitely a vacation yeah. then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Too expensive though. I like. Yeah, it's not cheap though. I, I, I no, it was ridiculous. Like we were like about twenty minutes from South Beach where I was staying. It was a good time. I've been got, in Miami. Got sunburn. Like Ten years. It's been. A I went like went a couple of years ago for work, but we're, well, we'll have to go back. Let me take that back. I did go on a cruise out of there, but that doesn't really count. Yeah, I mean, you're just stopping for the cruise. Yeah. Um. Chicago. No, Omar, no, Omar, I'm not counting all the people in my family wearing <laughs> jerseys. It, it was all but us. I promise. <laughs> all right, now that that's straightened out. Yeah, I Chicago. Got record straight. Chicago. 
Chicago. The right wing Chicago. is the in this match. Oh, yeah? Which one? Atlantis. <laughs> you should know me better. I'm not going <laughs> to say anything good about the I'm opposition. Kidding. Um, I feel like Chicago, and Kalen mentioned it a few minutes ago, Chicago have been on a bit of a decent run of form, so they won that crazy game the other week. Uh, and then they drew New England. Uh, they went down 1-0 and came back to draw 1-1. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Flip, flip, flip that. They went up 1 0, and then Nacho Hill scored in stoppage time in the first half to draw 1 1. So just pulling up the stats for that. They only had two shots in the goal. So maybe New England will feel a little harsh, a little uh, unlucky to not have come out of that with three points. But yeah, Chicago have been off to a slow start. They've gained points in the last two matches. Um, and they're, I feel like they're a bit of limbo. Their coach, Frank Klopas, is, I think this is like his third time as head coach of the team. He gets to keep hiring play, keep hiring coaches. Um, Rafael Vicky from Sweet, I was in Sweden, Switzerland. They brought him in and fired him. Ezra Hendrickson brought him in and they fired him. Brought him in and they fired him. Frank Klopas has been serving as interim manager. After their firings, and um, unfortunately, it hasn't worked out for them since he's been in. He got promoted to the permanent head coach of the head of 2024. Fortunately, the results haven't really been there as of yet. Of course, that crazy game they won and may have been flattering scoreline against New England. But yeah, I feel like this is a team that could finish outside of the playoffs again. I feel like Chicago just needs a clean reboot. Hopefully, Kuypers will help. Hopefully, he's back in form or he's in form. Um, I don't After hope. coming to MLS. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully for them. Hopefully for them. They'll be hoping he gets back in form uh, for them. Um, Shakiri has been a very disappointing signing for them. Gutman is back. Hopefully, will be back. Or not hopefully, but they'll hope, they'll hope he's back for Sunday. So it'll be a nice return for him to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Interested to see what the reaction will be. I'm sure it's going to be good for them. They may um, have, to have some back. To play. Yeah. Which Omar because they're, they're kind of thin. That. Yeah, they're kind of thin in the back line. So that's one thing to keep an eye on for them. Injury concerns for Chicago. So maybe a little bit better, a little bit bruised, and looking to get a result on the road to really ignite their season because – Right now, it's just kind of been a slow roll for them. Um, but again, just some players missing for them coming in. Maybe Goodman, like you said, Tyler gets forced into the lineup. But yeah, I feel like Chicago, their mindset will be, okay, we got to get back on the winning winning side. We got to get our season back on the right foot. You know, East is going to be very, very challenging. So they're going to want to come out at least with a point. Um, and yeah, yeah, what do you guys think? I think again, I go back to what I said. I think Atlanta's right wing, if you're Pineda and you are named Brooks Lennon or Saba Lobjanidze or Tyler Wolf or Tyler Wolf or Edwin Mosquera, <laughs> you should be playing the lottery before this match, yeah, because. They're injured that like they have hardly any significant depth over there. I mean, right now that I see it in the chat uh, too. Jack saying they'll start. Um, is it Jonathan Dean? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, Jonathan I think Dean. So. Um, yeah, Gutman. Is that a real name? Is that a huh? creative player name? Jonathan yeah, Dean. Know, right? <laughs> to to be fair, you yeah, know, <laughs> that sound like it. Um, it's from Macon, by the way. Yeah. And he's uh he's played a grand total of ninety four minutes this season <laughs> against New England. Do you see oh, Hill fam- Macon? I'm sure, Hill family in Macon, Macon, Georgia. Oh yeah. So oh. I measure Hill family up in the, the bins for yeah. Sunday's match. Which, unfortunately, Z- Zilf saying I'd like to see Mosquera start instead of Saba. I wouldn't be mad at that actually. Um. But yeah, start, we're go- no matter how you look at it, no matter how you look at it. You have to, you have to pick on that side, and you're gonna have your guys back. 
I hope I see multiple, multiple versions of the scenario where whether it's whoever's playing left back, I say Caleb, whoever's there or midfield, whoever's there is pinging ball after ball after ball over to whoever's playing right wing and just letting them cook on that side because it's going to be where everything happens at, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'll get off the right wing talk for a minute. The right, the right, whatever, right flank talk. I, I just, I think you've got a opportunity. You missed your opportunity up in, oh no, Omar, what, <laughs> what are you saying? Well, well, finish, um, finish your thought. We'll get to Omar in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it struck that. me. I was shook seeing what, what Omar just said. And I, wait, we'll read it in a second. But no, I think um, you got your guys back. You are giving Tommy a heart attack. You got your guys back. And you just have to um, play your game because you had your chance in Toronto. You really did. I still – I'll contend this to the end of the earth. It was a winnable game. But you have to. You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to. Win all of your home games. So just get back on the right track. Get back on the right track. Because like Kalen said a minute ago, you go up to New York, well, they don't know what's going on. They're not even playing in their normal baseball stadium. They're playing in another one. So you you have your opportunity up there. Go get six points out of the next two matches because you can. We have to address a comment in the chat from Omer saying, Shande Silva is turning into a disappointment. We should start seeing Derek Etienne Jr. Tommy, I'm interested in your thoughts on that. What are your what's your opinion? What? <laughs> We've gotten he's like third on the depth chart right now, right? <laughs> We're just passing Tyler Wolf now? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you if really I feel? if I walk away? From whatever my mom's making on Sunday to turn this game on, and I see it being started in this game. Easter is canceled. What's the next holiday? Is it, is it Labor Day or Memorial Day? April Fool's Day. Day. Next day, buddy. <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> Definitely. If the April game was Fool's on April show. Fool's Day, then I would say start them. <laughs> that'd be that'd be a great April Fool's joke if we posted a lineup graphic with somebody other than Sunday Silva in the starting lineup. You cancel. Hey, you cancel. Yeah. Sorry, nephews. You're not getting your Easter baskets. <laughs> Pineda, Pineda ruined Easter. I'm sorry. Well, well look, Dan saying Omar's not wrong. Shonday scored three in his first three. One in ten plus games since. Well, he's not a he's not a forward. He's a he's a winger. Um, I mean, a winger. I mean, he, he he can score. No, that's exactly not that's not though. to say he can't score. That's not to say he can't score. But that's not his primary role. Is finding roles to create chances for your striker. So you almost scored it against you, Orlando, right? Did, yeah. Didn't they make it? Wasn't that where he made the crazy save? Was that him that made the second attempt that uh, they ended up blocking? I, you know, there was that that series. Was I, that him? We'll have to look back. We'll have to look back. I don't but know. um, was, yeah, you look, he's his primary job is to create. I mean, he, he again, he doesn't know for goal, but um, yeah, his primary job is to create chances for your strikers. Now, let me ask you guys this. Speaking of, uh, Yakamakis presumably will be back, and unfortunately, Greece unable to qualify for Euros. So, you know, I'm sure that'll be weighing on him. Does he start, and then does Leash start? In congrats to Bartek and Poland for qualifying. Does Yakamakis start, and does Leash start coming off travel from Europe? What do you guys think? Yep. Hell yeah. I think so. You you have you have the extra day. You have Sunday. So mm -hmm. everybody's supposed to be back by Friday. Yeah. I'll say this. I'll say this too real quick with Yakimakis. He came in as a substitute for extra time, maybe with an eye toward penalties in the first place. And ironically, he missed his penalty. That was one of the deciding factors in Greece, not qualifying, but, um, you know, he'll, so that's a case for him to be starting, you know, not having played that much, um, on Tuesday. And then, yeah, like you said, Tyler yesterday get some time to get their legs underneath them just a little bit and train with the team. So, just throwing that out there. Yeah, just throwing I, that out there. I think, um, I think they play. I think you pretty much have everybody back because, yeah, you, you, you've they've had time, and 
I, I still want to go back to one more thing on what Omar was saying, but um, also, fun, I don't know that this is like a super secret fact or anything, but I haven't seen it thrown around much. But Chicago's never won in Atlanta at all. So if you're in, if you're into ah. on wood, if you're into that kind of thing, <laughs> the Tyler curse. No, I, what are you talking about? I every time I knock on wood, it works. Sorry, kids. Is it really? <laughs> you don't get your basket because Tyler ruined Easter. Hey, you didn't Chicago do it. One, one nothing. You didn't do it last week. Wait, what? I didn't, knock on wood. I didn't knock on wood. Yeah, that's why we lost. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> con- no, no. Con- conversely, real quick, conversely, I think it's been a while since Atlanta United won at their place. I think 2019 they won. Probably 2019. I think that was also. Um, no, not 2019. It was 2018. 2019 was the year they got destroyed. Yeah, they got crushed. 2018. <laughs> I was at that match. 2018, by the way. At, the crushed um, one was like on 4th of July, I think. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. But um, yeah, twenty eighteen. At night. Yeah. <laughs> um, um all right, so so Shonda, real quick. Um this season. He's see, we talking about, you know, the argument of yes, maybe not directly contributing to goals, but goal contributions in terms of assists, chances created, blah, blah, blah. Um he's got 0.55 expected goals on target. All right. Um, got three shots Not on bad. target, five shots. Not bad. His expected assists is is at point four, but hundred percent on his long ball accuracy. Seven chances created. And that's that's significant. Um, the one thing that I would really like to see him kind of improve on, and not always rely on his, you know, dribbly boy skills, which are great. To be fair, he I think he does a great job dribbling into the box and making something happen. Is when he gets really exciting, but his crossing, he has one successful cross this season. So I think, you know, you add that to your repertoire, my fancy word of the day, or at least my fancy sounding word of the day. Um, and just let him be a little more unpredictable on that left-hand side. And I think, I mean, you've got Yakamakis in there that's going to find the ball. I think he'll, he'll be just fine up top. Even if it's not in goals, I think he's going to be, up there with assists in some way, shape, or form come the end of the season. There. Okay. We're, we're not pressing the button to bring Derek in yet. We're not there. Omar, just calm down. Oh, see, look what oh, you did, Omar. You, you pissed left. him off. <laughs> he left. He's he's like, I'm done. Um, no, I I, you know, you have a depth chart for a reason. It's not a knock on anybody, but you have a depth chart for a reason. And I mean, I think, I think you, you, you have Silva and then you have a myriad of players that can play there. Tyler Wolf being one of them. Edwin Mosquera can play on both sides. Um, Derek, it is just, he's going to have to work his way back into the lineup. That's it's just that simple. It's nothing against him at all, but right now, that's he, he's not going to be rated above them at this point. Yeah. Yep. If you're, um, I guess $600,000 players playing for a lady United too, that doesn't bode well. I mean, granted he could be Eric I mean, Lopez. just inj- Yeah. Eric Lopez. I mean, he could be, yeah, still injuries, maybe a knock, but still just a massive disappointment, um, for a lady United. I hope he gets it together. I really do. I really we do. love you, Omar. Yeah. But that, <laughs> but not that take. Not that <laughs> um, appreciate you. Yes. Predictions. What are you guys thinking? I know Tyler's already going to say Atlanta's going to win. Uh huh. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> like Kalen said, it, if we don't, we're doing something wrong. You got to win this game. Two nil. Two nil. So um, Abram's going to be very important for this game. I, I assume he starts, right? So Abram and Williams. Yes. Do, yes. do you all agree on that? Yes. That's yes. the key to me here. And this is a chance. I mean, you know, once Gregerson's back, he's coming in, right? But for him, we talked about this the past couple of weeks. Abram makes a, a decent penny too. 
And, you know, we were going to see what happened with, with Cobb and, and how he did. And he was okay. But for Braun, this is job security too, right? As the number three player here. And, you know, if things go south with him, you could go back to Cobb here in, in the next, you know, whatever you want to say, depending on, you know, the three to six week span of maybe of him returning to the the lineup, right? He's got to do well. And, you know, we got to see him and, and Williams together and how they're going to do. But I'm hoping that they're able to get together soon because we've taken steps forward defensively, right? You know, we, if we have been allowing a lot of goals. We're way less than where we were last season. We're scoring goals, maybe not as much as we've wanted. Mm. But I think that, you know, again, you just can't let a team get ahead, especially at the men's uh, from there. So with that, I was actually oh Omar, no, two one. No, no, no. Two no. Two no. I'm Sorry. gonna say four I'm gonna say four oh. Four oh. You nothing. changed it from two nil. Did, oh, did I say that on uh did yeah, I you said message two Henry that? Well I'm feeling confident. All right. It's okay. Easter. Pineda's gonna leave every one of those players a basket. And it's gonna say Go have them lay an egg out there. That's going to be the big zero I, or nothing. I'm not going to yeah. tell you who scores, but Yakamakis is going to be real pissed off after what happened this week. Real pissed off, and he's going to score some bangers. I'm going to say 4-1. I'm going to say, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to say 3-1. I don't know if it'll be a clean sheet. I know the team has just been working really hard to get clean sheets. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know if that will happen on Sunday. I think maybe they give up a goal, maybe to give them something to think about, maybe go up to nothing, allow a goal to give them something to think about, to make it 2-1. And then I do think they score, um, a couple more to put out of reach. So I'm going to say 4-1. I'm not going to see who scores either. Um, but yeah, I think they win. I think you have to win to kind of wash the taste of Toronto out of your mouth. But um, yeah, I'll say two, four, one, going into what should be Wait, what? Hang on, uh, three, one, three, one, three, one. I'm sorry, <laughs> three, one. So you go. They should win three, one, going to a match against NYCFC, who even with them, you know, maybe not starting off the best way, still going to be challenging up there at what I think is City Field, Field. <laughs> with yeah. the Yankees playing. So, yeah, I think it's 3-1 Atlanta. I think it will be. As always, let us know your predictions in our on social media. You know where to find us. Uh, but, Tyler, you have a couple of quick things. Yeah, no, just, to just two quick things. The... So, really quick, repeating. Signia Hotel, Nest on 4 Bar. Come hang out with us. She Believes Cup is April 6th. It's a doubleheader. So, if you're going to the game or if you're not going to the game, regardless, you come after after Canada and Brazil wraps up and come chill with us in the bar. We're going to do a live show, going to get you guys ready for the Atlanta United game. So it'll be a full day of soccer, it'll be a I full day, day. but uh, it'll be fun. Awesome. Come hang with us. And the other thing, because I've seen it in the chat and, you know, now that the season has started back up, I haven't really mentioned them much, but the twos, I got to throw it out there. They had a rough, not a rough, I don't want to say rough. That's a bad word to use. They lost three, two to Orlando in their in their opener. Wasn't a bad game. They actually dominated statistically, had mm. a really, really good final 30 minutes, just couldn't quite get the equalizer. But they absolutely rolled over. Beat the brakes off. Yeah, Carolina Core, 4-0. Newcomers, Carolina Core, 4-0 um, this past weekend. And Javier Armas, the butter man himself, had a free- <laughs> Yeah, and I see, yeah, Jack just posted it. The, that free kick was was a banger, but they I mean they just looked good. They looked strong. You know, you can come out with the excuses or whatever. Carolina Core played the open cup, but that's I, I can't I can't listen to that because you had two, I think two starters for Atlanta United too. They got home, got in bed at 4 a.m. from Toronto, got up and then played in this match. Matt Edwards, yeah, was one yeah. of them. And uh Shout Nick out to him. and I and think Nick, yeah. I want to say, didn't Brendan travel? Did Brendan travel with the team? I think he did. Anyway, there was a handful. Yeah. So Carolina Core, you can have your excuses. 
But no, <laughs> Atlanta United two played a good game. They look solid. Go watch them. It's if you're already paying for you know Apple TV. Some of them are on Apple TV, but they're also on um, the website. So YouTube. Yeah, go go check which them out. is free, by the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> no excuses. Yes. But, um. Right. Yeah. Sometimes. Atlanta United too had a howling good time. I'll say. Get it. I like that. Carolina Core. Their mask goes to Fox. Well, Fox is still howl, yeah. but. By the way, yeah. Have you ever heard the noise <laughs> a fox actually makes? No. <laughs> 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 I wasn't gonna do that. Well, no. the fox said um, zero. That no, no. The fox <laughs> said it sounds like a blood curdling scream <laughs> from a child. Is what a fox sounds like. Go. Yeah. You should it. look at what mooses make. What sound mooses yeah. make? <laughs> what sound do mooses make, Tommy Moose? I I don't know. It's it's like. <laughs> It's like a weird sex noise. I don't know. It's weird. It's just, <laughs> just, just look it up. Just Google moose noise. Yeah, we'll we'll go later. If, if no, but my um, picture shows up making noises, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, shout out to the twos. They play uh, Crown Legacy um, Thursday at seven thirty. What's the Tucker teams and Noah's next pro already? So, um, be sure to watch out for that either YouTube or MLS Next World Cup or on MLS Season Pass. Um. I think that's it. Any other closing thoughts before we? Do you know what music bounce? they're going to play in the locker room on Easter? Oh, uh, enlighten me. What do you think? Hip hop. Oh no. <laughs> Hip hop. Dad joke right there. <laughs> yeah, definitely dad joke. This is where we're at. <laughs> it's kind of entertainment. Y'all come to see. <laughs> I, I have nothing to add to that. Do you know dinosaurs uh, don't celebrate Easter because they're extinct? Oh my gosh! Oh my god! This is this is where you hit the music. Yeah, this is where we're you done. Hit the music. We're man. done. I just I just looked up uh, Easter. Noah Cobb is gonna start. <laughs> Debatable. We'll see. No, we'll Noah see. Cobb is gonna start. We'll see. <laughs> oh yeah and shout out to the unified team i meant to shout them oh out yes there. they are yes. having their um their signing uh, i think it probably just wrapped up but it was going on during the show so, yeah shout out shout to, to them team. always good to see the unified team involved always good to see um brad i think it's tyler the fellow um ambassador involved yep. with them so great Green. great work they do with special olympics so hats off to them yeah all right. Hey, uh, guys, uh, real quick, one more thing. Yes. Uh, where do you think the team's going to eat breakfast before the game? <laughs> Waffle House. Where, Tyler? Tommy? IHOP. Oh, my God. I'm actually kind of mad at myself. I just didn't think of that. Do you get it? IHOP? Uh-huh. Yes, we get it. You get it? You're welcome. It's all good, everyone. We Happy Easter, it. everyone. We're done. April Happy 4th. Easter.